stuff. I don't want you pulling your your liver king out in front of everybody like that. <laughs> Bam, we're live. You, you guys said eat organ there. meat, so organ. Look is... at, I'm gonna pull my organ liver right out right here on camera. Your testicles Jeez. count. <laughs> okay, so I have my three favorite topics lined up for this fabulous show today: um, racism, abortion, uh, vaccines, and affiliates. All right, and see you guys perfect. later. Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> just drop off everywhere so if i check your mic too i think you might be rolling through the computer double check this it. morning you didn't sound as booming and authoritative as you normally do i like I was, the, i'm uh, so excited button up chola look you got going on thank you I, I i've never done this um the buttoned up to the top so i was just like all right you know what i'm gonna give this shit a fucking whirl it's my fucking very world. tiger world, woods ass world whatever i want there we go. We well, got that and your sweatbands on, so you're all good to go, just in case it gets hot in there. So wipe the wipe the brow. Wipe the brow. It you keeps put, him warm, right? What are, you, what are you putting shoes on now? Socks. Wait, I hear a hum. I hear a hum. I don't hear a hum. I hear a hum. I don't, I don't hear a oh, hum. Oh, I have to it's always weird when your friends call you during the um <laughs> podcast. You're like, shouldn't you be watching? Oh man. I don't know if I should answer this. <laughs> you guys hear a hum? I hear a hum. What is that? How come I hear that? I'm going to mute Matt. Nope, still there. Mute Chase. Oh. Uh-oh. I found it. Is it me? I found I it, yeah. Mm. How did you hear You know that? what it is? Because yeah. you're probably like in a garage somewhere with some like fucking weird shit plugged in, like in wrong plugs and shit. And, like, no. Let me yeah. see. Is your phone is your phone by? I know sometimes the phone will like tweak it out. Is your yeah, vibrator it's not by? It? Doing anything. That's loud. Oh, now it's good. Now the vibrator's hey. on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He left the really? Shade yeah. Switch to turbo. Hey, I moved guys... my phone away from the computer. Some, and it got louder. Guy... Yeah, that's, that's, that's really loud bad. now. Some guy texted me this morning and he said, Hey, are you going to do a show on quarterfinals? And I go, I don't know shit about quarterfinals. And he goes, Well, they start this weekend. Is that true? Yeah. And, and um, can we talk about that? I know it's got a little bit boring, but. Um, no, uh, dude, we have to, what we talk about. We're all good with oh. that. All right. How, how many workouts is it? It's, it's five? five. Well, yeah, they're showing five. It's five. Still, they have five floor, uh, uh, floor diagrams out. Were it's those five. leaked on accident again? No, they put them out early to kind of make. They sure sent them in an email, and then they yeah. released them. So they've been out. It okay, wasn't... but but there were rumors that it was leaked, but it wasn't leaked. No, just eh, no. Nah, I don't think so. Internet. No, that was just me starting a rumor with you, Savon. <laughs> oh, thank you. Someone had commented on that when they posted the floor plans, and like they, they put them out in an email Monday at two, when they gave sent out the official invites via email, but they didn't post them yet. They just put them in the email. Hey, what do you guys think about this guy who's like kind of he's come on the string uh, string stream scene scene he's come on the scene hard. Um, uh, people started telling me I should have him on the show, but I kind of didn't want to have him on the show because I the first video I saw that he did was just about steroid use, and it, and I'm just so not interested in talking about steroid use uh, on the athletes' parts. Um, and I posted he but he got a CEO shirt. So like I have this oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hiller, what's that guy's Hiller. name? Hillfit. Yeah, Andrew. Andrew. Andrew Hill. What do you guys think about him? What he's doing, bursting up on the scene, making all these videos. Everyone's like, you guys will. Get I'm almost offended. Everyone's like, oh, he's just like you. You guys are gonna get along great. But he's so fuck. He's really aggressive. Do you guys watch any of his stuff? I haven't seen any of his stuff. No. Oh, okay, I'll send you. Is he talking about right. athletes doing steroids? I, th well, uh, I think the first video anyone ever sent me of his was he was basically talking about steroids. And I just felt like, oh, fuck, is this just clickbait? I, there was a video going around. Um, it had like a million views. It's probably, I don't know, like five or six or ten years old. And I watched it. And it's all about it's this guy interviewing this guy who's supposedly the expert on steroids in the CrossFit community. <laughs> and at the very end, I realized that the entire thing is a sales pitch to b contact this guy to buy steroids because basically <laughs> he's saying the whole theme of the one that's not what this andrew hiller guy is doing by the way i don't want to conf confuse the two but this guy's basically saying that every crossfit games athlete is on steroids he knows it for a fact and that you have no chance of getting at um to pass regionals unless you get on steroids and then and then at the end he's like and so if you want them you know i'm the guy <laughs> 
And I'm like, what? It's like the person that kind of bought me out a success. And then at the very end of a 50 minute video, he pitches his like ebook. Right. Totally. Yes. <laughs> totally. So. Uh, no, there's probably a reason I've never heard of him because that sounds stupid. And the only people that would like really pay attention to that would be the ones that are like, mm -hmm. I gotta, I gotta get the steroids. Cause that's the only way I'm going to get anything. I gotta yeah, be and somebody. That is why so I, I gotta. There's a part of me wants to do steroids so fucking bad. There's <laughs> no part of me. Yeah, I want. I want to see the new Icarus version two with Sevon Matosian on steroids. I'm not on steroids. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta start sizing up those t-shirts soon. You're making fun of Derek Forrest, but you know that's a. Well, I want. I'm not going to use a pot calling the kettle black reference, but you know, my, my, I mean, you could. <laughs> my, my you just got to get a deeper tan. That's this all. Shirt too big on me. This is my power <laughs> shirt. It's your Tiger Woods shirt. That's Sunday at the Masters, man. I wore this for one of the events we covered. I was going to say and people started making memes like I worked at Radio Shack and shit. They put like a Radio Shack logo on here. <laughs> I don't know if you could pull off the same, like your same vibe with your, your leather strapped uh, camera holsters and then a, a red button down shirt. I just don't know if the, the effect would be the same. Are there any Radio Shacks anymore or are they all closed? There's one here in town. There is? Really? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel like every city has one. Yeah. Hey, will I you pull I, one up at Chase's city, Sousa? What city do you live in, Chase? <laughs> Dallas. Dallas. Let's see if we're at the closest Radio Shack to house. Sorry, Grandler. No, it's all good. Uh, I, 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 what's funny is I, I know that a lot of them went out of business. And so I don't know if the Radio Shack that is here is a authorized seller of Radio Shack stuff or if it's an actual Radio Shack. I don't know if that's a. Did you like going in there as a kid? Radio Shack? Yeah. Hell yeah. Me too. Dude, they had all the cool things, man. Like yeah. remote, weird remote control little robot things and cool little. I Techie gadgets. Lemon. I like. Did oh, you like lemon. going in there, Chase? You weren't a Radio yeah. Shack guy. Were you a Radio Shack guy, Chase? Like as a kid, no. like as no. Unless there's did, like remote control cars sold at Radio Shack, I didn't really have a need to go in there. Did you um? Did you have a um? Did you ever rewire your car, put in your own stereo, shit like that? No, I was not smart enough to do that. <laughs> did you do that stuff, Bill? Like put a new stereo and speakers in your car and shit like that? I mean, we I would we would rewire stuff. It was funny. Me and my brother had a my brother had an old '69 Volkswagen Fastback. Sweet. Lowered to the ground, like he slammed that thing to the ground. He got a ticket because it was too low here in San Francisco. It was so <laughs> funny. But that like that was when those things all came out and everyone was doing that. Everyone was rewiring like home stereo boxes in the back seat, so you'd have a stereo like a, a living room stereo system box so you could have your big subwoofer in the back and everyone's putting their whatever amps under their seats and <laughs> rewiring whatever they could do so yeah we mess with that stuff hey and that's back when i hated cops i would see them pull someone <laughs> over with their car lowered and i would just be like you fucking assholes do you know how much work it's going to take that guy to fucking unfuck that Dude, don't break the law savon uh, yeah, uh, yeah. That, I just thought that was so he, they, he got pulled over uh, the cop said and this was funny this is back in the day so the cop said if you can't drive over this uh, cigarette box then you're too low interesting and that was that was I, I don't know what I, I mean what cop is gonna be running around with a box of cigarettes be but it'd be like man. here's the box here's my measuring stick for that so it's like the barbell here. butt test but for cars yeah <laughs> totally yeah, can you roll you this over right your ass? Side. Yeah, can you roll the barbell over your butt? <laughs> if it doesn't go over, you've been squatting enough. If not, back to the squat rack. Right. <laughs> D does yours go over your butt, Chase? Oh yeah. Does yours Although go I had to, I had to do a lot of work because I, I was a swimmer, so like swimmers have no butts, no asses. So it took a lot of time to build that up. I, I was actually thinking about you this morning in the shower, Chase. I was thinking Ew. about you. Um, I did. I did those burpees. I did 50 burpees the other day in, in a minute and 57. And instead of people being like, wow, that's really good for, you know, that's good. Great job. Uh, people are like, yeah, he's short. And I was wondering, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um, and so I was, I was wondering about, I mean, I popped in my head how um, you used to test the games workouts when there was swimming. I don't know if you do that anymore, but I saw you do that and you would have to do it impromptu. Like you'd just be yeah. there like in your suit and should be like, get naked, jump in the pool. <laughs> I would be like, yeah. you would be ready. Yeah. Did, um, and you would do really well, but did you, did that bother you when people would be like, well, he was a collegiate swimmer. Uh, no. he, he was, a swimmer. I mean, no, that's why I'm getting used to test that event. So because you're abnormally good at it. 
Well, I also spent 15 years training it to be good at it. You know, I just, I've been training burpees about 15 years too. When they were introduced to me at CrossFit, I was like, okay, this is my jam. (laughs) (laughs) That's just because you're short. short. (laughs) (laughs) Chase, do you know the story of how I met Bill? Bill has no idea story. And I, I wanted this story to get told on the podcast today because the world, I feel I can thank Bill for you. (laughs) Very close. It's very close. (laughs) Really close. There's two guys. There's two guys. Um, there was a guy, Travis Titus. That was the first time I ever heard of CrossFit. Um, but, um, I, I don't remember how I met you, Chase. You're just kind of one of those people. It was like I was trying to think how I met Miranda um, Alcarez. I can't remember. I think it's just like we were in the same space so much that eventually we just ha- were forced to say hi to each other. <laughs> right? Forced. Is that accurate, Chase? That's right. our story? It's kind of boring. Like, okay, he's here. I'm here. Hey, what's up? Um, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Like, we're, like just, um, we're, we're basically mutual friends through Bill. That's all. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, Bill, do you remember the story very well about Hell how yeah. we met? Yeah, okay. I do. Will you tell it? Um, so the first time I heard about your name was through a firefighter. He was a lifeguard and then a firefighter that I hired who was your college roommate, Chad Winnerstrom. Yeah. So he's like, And yeah. when you say my roommate, I, I think I was pretty much homeless and I would just sneak into his living room. and <laughs> Roommate, like he left the door open for you. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, but he said that, uh, I don't know, you guys were talking. He's like, yeah, my captains, you know, we do these weird workouts and we do this stuff and it's this CrossFit stuff. And, you know, he's. We do all these weird things and it's super hard. Oh, yeah. Blah, 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 Sorry. Blah. You're right. I hadn't heard of CrossFit at that point. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Fuck. You're welcome. Okay, sorry. Go on. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> now, so, I got, uh, now I got collared shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bill. So oh, then uh, after that, it was a, a birthday party that I had at a friend's house. Um, it was my birthday. And we had just some friends over. And, and Chad was actually – he was one of the guys. And we had, we had this um, – I think at the fire station, we did a body for life competition. It was kind of a fitness thing that we did with the firefighters, just trying to get everyone eating right and losing weight, whatever the transformation stuff was. And, and you were the, the captain at that firehouse, right? You were the yeah, big dog there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so we did, the winner got whatever money and um, they splurged on a keg. And so we all, everyone got all fit. And then we would go and have a keg party at this house. <laughs> and so we're at my buddy's house and you were just coming back from filming the arm wrestling uh thing with okay. travis okay so you and Haley were is in... this 05 or is this 06 05 oh man i think 05 okay yeah i think 05 um so you guys were coming back in your winnebago you had your two great danes in your car that was the first i met you and i met and i i mean i'm not a fan of her not right now but my daughter my youngest daughter's mom that same day Oh, wow. (laughs) That same day. So we're all hanging out in the back. You know, everyone's partying and whatever. At the end of the night, we all went to the local uh, dive bar, Alex's Bar and Grill at the time. It's not there anymore. Um, Got all hammered. And the last thing I remember was me and Chad, you drove your RV right in front of the bar. We crashed out in your RV. And all I remember was waking up to your Great Danes licking my face in the morning. (laughs) <laughs> that's right. Hey, yeah. were we all throwing up and shit? I rem- I think I remember being like hung over beyond hung over. We were hung over, yeah. There was a lot of drinking that was going on. There was a lot of drinking. But that was the first that was the very first time we met. And then like literally ever since that and then you you know, you got in you were doing the uh you got in did the every second count things. Um that movie you I, I love that you hit up Glassman personally and were like, "Hey, your videos suck. Can I do them?" Let me just do them. <laughs> and, you know, that was very early into CrossFit. And that's what was so cool about the early days of CrossFit. Like that was that's how everyone got into whatever the space was that they were. You eat nobody. W- I mean, other than you were already kind of making videos, you were doing some of that stuff. Everyone that did the stuff that they were doing really didn't have any experience on stuff. It was like, hey, this job needs to get done. I'll do it. Yeah. Hey, I'll do it. Put me in there. I'll, I could do that. Hey, you're kind of good at this. You want to go hop in on it? All right, sure. And everyone just kind of did things. But like the CrossFit, that the story, like my story in CrossFit is just really weird. Like my connection with you, 
my connection with Greg, even with Glassman, like I met him at um, a baby shower in Santa Cruz because one of the guys that was one of the original members at his gym that was designing stuff, Nick Massman, um, wow. stuff for like, wow. yeah, like the journal and all that kind of stuff. Like his daughter was, is my daughter's best friend from birth because my ex-wife and Nick's wife were best friends in college. And we're all at this baby shower and Greg's there and he Greg's there with the and I don't remember I don't know if Nicole was there. There was some Asian. Was dude that, that was what there. year was that? Was that two thousand four? Two that was two thousand one one or two. Yeah. I think I think Crazy, Lex was like six dude. months old, maybe. You guys are so old. <laughs> like, dude, we're all drunk there, and it's like, <laughs> hey, let's have a pull up competition. And so, you know, I'm I'm a wrestler and I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna fucking crush these guys. So what do we do? We get up there and they're they're not doing I mean, and, and this was I wasn't into the CrossFit thing. So I didn't like I just did my pull ups. I do pull ups the way I do pull ups. I can do a lot of them Strict. And they're like, you know, it, not that we knew not that we knew butterflying or anything like that, but they're doing this kipping stuff. I'm like and I was the classic. What the fuck is that shit? Cheaters. You can't, you can't do those cheater pull up. Cheaters. You fucking beat me. I can totally do more than you on pull up. Yeah, but that was it's crazy, man. Like the connections way back are, are a trip. And then ever hey, since then, dude, hate. like you, you've always been like for me, you've always been my connection on CrossFit when I needed a connection in CrossFit that's not in CrossFit. So like remember when Grid came out? Yeah. And I'm like, dude, they need masters. I wanna I wanna hop in on that. You oh, were yeah, the first yeah, yeah, person yeah. I head up. I'm like, dude, wow, you have a good memory. Is this fake? Is this fake? Not fake? Should I hop in? Can I hop in? I really want to do it. I mean, so we've had a really cool connection ever like ever since that, yeah. ever since way back, man. It's true. I I uh, it's funny um and you in greg uh greg um chad my friend chad who who was who introduced me to you he had a love-hate relationship with you too like i just remember <laughs> like he'd be just talking about how fucking amazing you were he would tell these stories that were unfucking believable um of of being fully suited and running these stairs yeah on on the on the cliffs of the pacific ocean there <laughs> and he would just tell me he'd be like dude and i would be like i can't even fucking believe the shit he's telling me and just the hour long workouts and the the fucking shit he used that you used to make those guys do with the hoses so and fun. he he wanted to be as fit as you so fucking bad he looked up to you but you just drove them so fucking hard he was like torn you know what i mean yeah is, is this guy a good guy or is this guy a fucking asshole is this guy, a good guy, or is this guy a fucking asshole and you know today i mean you i mean uh, i mean he's a great guy anyway but he's in a he's i don't know if you're still he's in touch a fire with captain him. now yeah yeah, yeah he's I see such all, a, yeah yeah he's a gem of a man and and uh, society is lucky that he trained under you and that he's out there um saving lives today it's crazy yeah he's a good dude yeah, if I got in an accident, I'd want his engine to roll up. Do you remember? Yeah. Do you remember this conversation? You came by one time. I think you actually worked out at my fire station in Shell Beach one time. Yeah, came yeah. Through. Did and I work out there with you? I pulled up out front. Yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> I did, we did something. We did something in the in the bay there. I think, and we, we it's Chase. You're gonna laugh at this one. Um, we talked about uh firefighter workouts and you talked mm. about how we the, the whole thing about like you know the cheetah doesn't get warmed up before it goes to an all-out oh, yeah. sprint to do whatever <laughs> so like and i would laugh about how sometimes i think it's good for firefighters to do a workout without getting warmed up because that's how you work on the call like you get the bell the bell goes off you know like hold on one second i have to mobilize i need to mobilize my back <laughs> out i need to make sure i roll my hips up maybe do a little happy baby over here before we get up and do this thing and that thing <laughs> happy baby what's so, a happy baby <laughs> That's so you land it. your back and you grab the inside of your feet and you like rock around. You way like stretching out your hips, oh. you know. You got to mobilize the hips. What's that? What's a happy wife? Is there? Is that a stretch too? <laughs> yeah, but that's that's like we call that a Saturday night ride. Yeah, it's a whole different kind of like <laughs> hips opening up, um, stretching. <laughs> yeah. um, but like now, I find myself and I'm I'm terrible. I I preach mobilization and warming up and all that. And dude, I just time wise, I just don't do it. It, yep. There's a happy baby right there. <laughs> oh yeah, I see. One of my boys does that a lot. I mean, and, and he goes into the splits from there. Like at jujitsu, I see him do that a lot. Yeah, happy baby. Well, I mean, you need it, especially if you're happy go baby and happy like wife look like very similar. It's very similar. It's it's very similar. Very similar. Add, <laughs> add a counterpart to it, and <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but workout. doing like workouts, doing workouts where you don't where you don't do a whole lot of like I nowadays I'm like start the clock here we go just put the weight on let's go i do that like not on purpose not because i think it's anything but it's more of a time thing but man i do that all the time now 
I don't do anything unless I do 10 minutes on the assault bike first. Really? Nothing. Like, I like literally, like, it, it is the foundation of every single fucking and maybe it's also because then i can research like podcasts while i'm doing that like i can put uh, it up on the screen or i can listen or i can take notes <laughs> but like nick i g, need to be nick g knows what's up bill's one of yeah. the first two rounds he's an old member of ours <laughs> we yeah call him, we call him burpee nick you and him should go burpee to burpee <laughs> and, and and i get that like, if i was doing cindy and i was like okay i'm gonna do 20 rounds i'm gonna do a round a minute then maybe i maybe i wouldn't do the assault bike first I would just be like, okay, I'm going to game this. I'm going to do 20 rounds, and the first five rounds will be the warm-up. But, that, yeah. But I don't lift anything heavy. Are you used to lift heavy, Bill? Yeah. Yeah. Did you get the workout that I sent you, Chase? Yesterday? Yes. Did I not the, respond to you? Sorry. No, you're like, That's all usually, the- you're like, damn. Yeah, so I, I like to lift heavy still. I'm not, not as heavy as I was when I was, like, training, but um, I still like to put some weight overhead. You're still effing strong, man. What's, what's the heaviest thing you've lifted in the last uh, six months, even just, like, a deadlift? or a back squat um, or a bench deadlift i've pulled 405 back squat wow. i've done 365 um clean and jerk i've done 265 missed 275 wow. you are still strong as shit wow hanging in there hanging in there i gotta keep up with my brother man he's fucking strong how old are you yeah. 50 i'll be 53 in a month two months no shit yeah. where do you dye your hair no dude it's all no. It's all natural. Do you think that something's look at, wrong look at, with look at the, all look this? At, look at the look at the beard. Look how look how dark my beard is compared to yours. I think you dyed <laughs> uh, just yeah, your I mustache. See. Look at that. That's the- <laughs> <laughs> some some stranger came up to me and goes, "Hey, you should dye your beard." And you go, "I go, why do you say that?" It was just at a coffee shop in Santa Cruz, and he goes, "Because then it won't be so obvious you dye your hair." I'm like, "Wow." <laughs> I, I just ignored him. I was like. <laughs> I was thinking about that this morning in a coffee shop, looking at old men with dyed hair, and I was like, "You look nah. so ridiculous! Like, who gives a shit if you're going gray?" Yeah, like just own it. Totally. I agree with the. Wi- I don't. Women should dye their hair too. I, I, I don't. I don't think should dye their hair. Yeah, me neither. Just let it go. Yeah, let it go. I I, I think it uh, <laughs> at some point. Uh, uh, I think she's talking to you, Bill. Shit, that's my girlfriend right there. She's oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a freebie on my side. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> you didn't have to say that. You're an honest dude. Said I'm 46 and have way more gray hair. All right, fair enough. I, I don't have any below here, though, yet. Like, I don't have any on my titties or on my sack or on my butt. <laughs> uh, occasionally, I'll get a stray gray out of the nose, and it, it's fucking coarse. It's like... It's like thick. It's like it's like, like a nail. <laughs> it is weird that like a gray hair is definitely different feeling than like a colored hair. Like I don't I don't know why that feels different. I mean like because I'll get Isn't I'll get like coarse? I'll get one out of here too. And it just comes out. It's like way different. Isn't it more like coarse? Yeah. yeah and tough. Yeah, I don't know. Like yeah, thick. If you had a micrometer, it would be thicker. <laughs> Maybe. How old are you, Chase? I will be forty in November. Look at that, and, and you and you have, and you have kid. You have how many kids? Two. And how old are they? Uh, they just turned four and two back in February. Wow, you started November what? Eight. November what? Eighth. Oh, okay. Because after finding out that we, you, Casey's living in Livermore. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, my my birthday's in November. I'm November twenty fourth though. Hey, look at us, Scorpios. Yes, so. Sir. <laughs> and and Chase, do you have a day job or you you run a gym? Yeah, I have an affiliate here in Dallas, CrossFit Big D, which we would sell a lot of T-shirts if we actually made them, but I don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and what does the D stand for? Dallas. It's the nickname for Dallas, Big D. Big D. And you have a gym too, uh, Bill. CrossFit Inferno. And I've been to your gym a bunch of times. You actually, yeah, you and Greg actually showed up on our 10-year anniversary. That's right. Yeah. And and so that's what you guys do. Ba- basically, you guys run your gyms. And you do um, – is, is it seasonal work or is it not? It's all year doing game stuff. By games, I mean the whole ecosystem of competitions. I think yeah. the landscape now, it's it's more year-round with the off-season events, getting able to do live feeds. But Bill and I <clears> – I mean, we'll do anything from Wadapalooza, which is like that January, February, to Dubai, which is in that December, and then like anything in between – we, uh, I don't know. It's like contract stuff, I guess. Yeah. 
Um, and do you guys do a lot of stuff together? So like when I think of Tommy and Sean, because they have the podcast, I think of them as doing a lot of stuff together. And it's always kind of weird when they're not together for me. Like what, what, what did I watch? There's a couple things I felt like I watched that it was you and Sean, right, Chase? And then there was something yeah. I watched that was Bill and, and, and Sean mm -hmm. that I followed and covered on my podcast, uh, two separate events, maybe in the last year. Um, but do you guys like to go together? You, you guys, and you guys have the podcast together. Get, get with the program. Yes. Yes. Get, get with the, the programming. programming. Um, <clears throat> I mean, Bill and I, man, I feel like we, we were, obviously we work really well together. We have the podcast together, the way we work with the other broadcasters and how that all mixes up. I mean, we've been doing that for 10 years, so it's not that weird, but you do have different relationships as far as how, the flow goes, how you work together, how you feed off the other. It's just, it's a little different experience with the different people that you use, but it's not abnormal not to work together for us. But I um, like working together. <laughs> I wish we got to do more broadcast uh, events together. Yeah. Yeah, we have fun. How, do, how, how does that work? Is it... Um... You, you know, when you graduate from high school, people... You, People, you know, there's always that thing, oh, this is so much like high school. This is so much like high school. And you really need someone kind of to tell you, hey, that's how the rest of life is going to be. <laughs> the rest uh, of life is going to be who you know, who likes you. And, and I'm not digging on – I'm not um, uh, ripping on that either. I think it's a perfectly fine metric in a lot of spaces. Sorry, go ahead, Bill. No, I was going to say, I, I think that – I heard that big old nose of yours taking air. I know that some point <laughs> – just like that. You know, like when a propane tank's about to explode? It's like <laughs> just sucking in oxygen. That I mean, did I say nose? That's I mean that crap. big brain of yours needs oxygen. Sorry, hey, sorry. It's all right. You got a big nose, too, so you can say it. It's fair. That's it was fair. just like pulling in fucking O2 gonna... <laughs> for smart shit to come out. Okay, go ahead. Um, I think that in our space – you know, there's always a matter of who you know or where you are. There, are, you you happen to fall into a situation or, or an opportunity at a, at a particular time, whether you made that opportunity happen or not by who you know. Um, being that we've done broadcast stuff over the years with the CrossFit Games and the regionals and stuff like that, a lot of the other events wanted. If they have a broadcast, if they have a live stream, then if you have the the voices of CrossFit, the games, the regionals, the the announcements, whatever, broadcasting their event, then it it, it brings a, a sense of legitimacy to that event. It makes it feel like it's in oh, the same like sphere. That. So it's like you know they want to have us there too. And you know I mean we'll we'll hit up the events and be like, hey, do you want to have this? Mm -hmm. You know, do you want some of some of that kind of stuff? And I, you know some of the events, I, you want to go to help the event you want to go and i mean for a, for us a lot of times it was so that we can get reps on that too we want to get experience because we aren't professional broadcasters we never were we were crossfitters that <laughs> like the coach and like to not. get in the space and yeah totally um you know when you're when and before you're on, it says anything stupid let me interrupt you yeah. um shaquille o'neal and fucking charles barkley are not professional fucking broadcasters either no. and now they are so no one say anything fucking stupid well, no, I mean, it, it takes some time to get there for sure, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and Steven and, and that guy, Stephen A. Smith on ESPN, that is not a fucking professional broadcaster. That's a professional <laughs> ass clown. He's fucking no, ruining hate. ESPN is ruining yeah. the UFC with their professional broadcasting. Let's be very, very clear. Totally. Okay, I, I think I think what we what we are able to bring to the broadcast <clears throat> is that we are one. We're coaches, so we can see certain things that a lot of people can't see. Uh, we're athletes, so we understand what they're doing, what they need to do, what they should be doing, what they're messing up on, whatever. And then we just have a love for what it is. Like we, I, I'm a, I'm a CrossFitter, man. Like I've done all the sports. I mean, I, I'll always consider myself a wrestler, mm -hmm. and so I love competition, and I always have. Um, but you know, we've been this has been our sport for the last handful of years, so we get excited about it. It's not hard for us to get excited about a race that's going on and all the cool things that are happening. It, you know, I think, and I think honestly that that comes from being an affiliate coach because every day we're in all those classes and you got to bring excitement to the people that are out there and what you're saying and all that. So I think it's really, really fun. And I think the events start to see that and they want that for their, um, uh, their events and either we hit them up and reach out or they reach out to us and then we go and, and you know, whether they, whether they get, 
Sean and me or Sean and Chase or Chase and me or Sean and Tommy or Tommy and whoever. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> you cunt. You cunt. Uh, you just need a little bit more liver, dude. A little more liver. You'll, you'll get there. Oh, my God. Oh my, God. <laughs> my fucking um, show. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But I think that makes it cool for us. And I, I think we're able to bring a lot to uh, the community. And that's, I mean, that's really what it's for. We want to bring a lot of good stuff to the community and we want to do it the right way. I it thought you like want to make money and stay in fancy it. hotels in Dubai. That's what, that's my thought about what I mean, it's, 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 it's cool. cool. Room in Dubai. Like, right. <laughs> like we, we bunk up almost every off season competition we do. And, and that's, I mean, Savant, to your point, it's like, like I, I almost feel like in anything in CrossFit and I feel like this is almost, greg's approach when he started it is like we don't do these things like for the money like that's not why we want this job we want to be a part of the next event the next broadcast to be able to bring our love and passion and the beauty of the sport side and how that can tie into the community side as a whole for crossfit we want to be on the forefront of that because we know how valuable that is to us personally we want to be able to convey that at the same time it's like we're not going to work for free right and that's the tough thing with these off-season events because it costs a lot of yes, money. You yes, you will. Yes, you will. Put on a lot. <laughs> Why you do? And years ago, yes. Now, absolutely not. Like, yeah. it, he, here's the weird thing. I'll tell you. I used to have this boss, and I was very close to him. And for 15 years, he would basically call me 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And occasionally, I would complain. And a, another friend of mine who is a, a, a colleague of mine would say to me, hey, dumb fuck, would you rather he call you or he doesn't call you? And that would put everything into perspective. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes, call me anytime. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the shower taking a shit. I'm humping my wife. I'll take it. You know, there when you it's so funny when you put things in perspective, right? You hate I this think- motherfucker. You hate him yeah. so fucking much. But you like a stranger looks at your kid wrong. And all of a sudden that guy could be your best friend. Mm-hmm. Like like. It's it, perspective's crazy. Yeah, you, yeah. It's, it's a um. It's tough, right? It's, especially for guys who've been around as long as you. Who you? It's it. It's like a relationship. You love your wife to fucking death, but sometimes you still need some alone time. So yeah. you love CrossFit to death, but it's like, yeah, you guys still have to pay. Like, I still need to make money off of you. It's weird. It's weird. It's well, weird. I by mean, the way, I'm not slouching in my chair. Someone said your back hurts because you're slouching. I have a baller chair that just reclines. There I got go. lumbar support and shit. I don't. She like, did have that question is what did you do to your back? Who, me? Yeah, you. I have no idea. Well, just, you know, it's, it's just what all did you just originally stupid deadly, do to, your to be honest. Well, one time I was on mushrooms in college and I jumped off a roof. Like every, we were on a roof and all of us were on a roof together. And all the dudes were jumping off and they were like real athlete dudes. And I was not. No. <laughs> so, so it when was like someone might as well trouble. just thrown me off. Seriously, someone. And I landed, and I and I and I blacked out. And I when I came to, I was like, all the dudes were gone, and I'm just laying there, and I'm just like, oh, this is <laughs> fucking mailed on you. Wow, oh, I guess. Or, or you know, I don't know where they went. I was fucking high on mushrooms, so I'm like, okay, this doesn't feel good. And I um, so I went to the, it was there was a party. I went inside. I got my girlfriend. And I um, put her on the handlebars of my bike and I rode her home in Isla Vista. And I woke up in the morning and I was stuck. Wow. You know what I mean? Just like yeah. stuck like a board. And uh, I went to the doctor and they x-rayed and they said, yeah, well, your spine, like one of your vertebrae is like has a piece broken off of it. Oh. So if your parents was, ever threaten you with like, if all your friends jumped off a bridge, would you? And you're like, absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are there girls in the water? <laughs> It's not even that is like, are there girls 50 feet below me water or not? Right, right, right. <laughs> and so um, when that healed, I was fine. And then I started to do and then basically there was a there was a point in my life where like four times a year, my back would go out and literally it would be like I'm just turning around to wipe my butt and my back would go out. Mm. And then I started doing CrossFit and my back started only going out about twice a year. But it would go out every time I was doing something CrossFit related. Right. It, it was always picking shit off the ground. Mm. And so um and I would coaches would be like, dude, your form is perfect. You have the most upright squat ever. They would tell me. And what's interesting is, is some of the positions they would tell me to be in, like squatting. When I squat upright, my back hurts. Interesting. I, I think I have too much. You know, like the, the most men, I think they, they'll be like, they'll tell you to stand up. I have too much flexion in my back. Is that the word flexion? Hyper- and so those overextended. 
Yeah. So those cues for me are bad. Yeah. Mm. Those cues for me are bad. And um, I think that's a bad cue, period. 100%. It is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I feel forward folds and all that shit, like all that shit is so much better for me. Like I, I just prefer, I don't know. Sounds but, like but, you, need, you need a little hollow body work. You need a little stability work rather than just squat work. It's not about, it doesn't sound like it's about the position. It sounds like it's about the support in the position. Yeah. And it's funny you say that too, because there was a point I had hurt, I th I'd hurt my back one time. And then all of a sudden, the next time I back squatted, I had lost like 70 pounds off my back squat. It went from like, I don't know, like, like 240 to, to like, as my max front squat or something to all of a sudden I couldn't front squat like 150 pounds and I couldn't engage my, like, like this, the spot, like from the top of my penis to my belly button. Like it just like, I had no control there. Mm. It was weird. And, and since then I've never really got it back again. That's one of those things that it's like a two step back to take one step forward. You have to step back and then it's not, am I lifting heavy or, you know, when people say like, well, I'll just, I'll go lighter and that'll make it better. It's like, well, go lighter and then think about what you're trying to retrain because you're going lighter. You're not going lighter just so it doesn't hurt. You're going lighter so that you can, you know, engage your midsection, make sure that you're keeping more of a hollow body position, making sure that you're supporting the spine, making sure you're not getting overextended. And yeah. as you build that, um, you can start. You want to know? You want to know what was the best thing for me as far as as far as strength goes? And this can is I out guess? of all of my years of training. Yeah, guess. Are you going to say the reverse hyper? Nope. I mean, okay. I wish I had one of those actually. The honestly, the best thing for me was COVID. Because <laughs> when we did co like so before now you're talking my language. Now I know, I, language. I know you're gonna be stoked on this. <laughs> so the world shut down, no one could go to their gyms, no one could do their thing. We went to Zoom right away. So we you know, we checked out all of our equipment to all of our people and and we were running our classes. And prior to that, I'm lifting heavy, I'd always have my belt on, I'd always have my knee sleeves on, I'd always have all my accessory <laughs> pieces. <laughs> Yeah, because the thing was to me is I'm training so I can't afford to get hurt. So I would use those as my things not to get hurt. Once COVID hit, I decided I was going to lift everything that I had all of our people doing, which is all the kettlebells and doing all the stuff. And I'm like, OK, you know what? Since I'm doing all that, I'm going to not use the belt anymore and I'm not going to use the knee sleeves anymore. Mm -hmm. And since then, I haven't used the belt at all. And I am just as strong now without a belt as I was when I had a belt in using it that way. And I think that one piece has, has shored up my core strength because we use a belt so much. I think uh, you know, CrossFitters use them way more than they need to. I used yeah. to tease Dan Bailey all the time. We'd be doing like, I don't know, 95. We did the, uh, the hot shot event in, in oh, Payson. Yeah. And Dan rolls up and he's got, what was it? Like the hang squat clean or the squat cleans or whatever the, one of the movements were there. And it wasn't power real heavy. It was like, yeah, something like that. It was like 135 pounds. It wasn't, it wasn't heavy. It was like 19 power cleans at 135, which is just brutal. It was a lot granted, but he's like, you know, he's got his belt on. I'm like, Hey, what do you, what do you got that? <laughs> what do you got that fashion accessory for? <laughs> He's like, Bill, well, you know, we're doing a lot. I'm like, dude, I don't have a belt. You're you're way stronger than me. Like, what are you wearing a belt for? Like, Bill, you know, I can't afford to get hurt. And I, I just remember, I mean, Dan's such a great, like, I love that dude to death. I, I've never seen a more badass crosser to get more shit by more people than that guy, you know? And it's like, in he, this show, it's so funny. Um, but I was, but even we'll then, talk like, about, we're going to talk about Dan here in a minute now that Bill brought him up. I mean, that, I've that was talked about Dan on my show, but I'm ready to talk about him a little bit. That's so. just one of the things that we always did. Like everyone throws a belt on and, and not having that belt, I think has been a, has been a game changer for me. And so I, I'll do that a lot with my athletes. I'll say, you don't put that belt on until you get around like 85% or whatever. Yeah. I like agree. You I, have got to have this. You got to have that midline stability as it is unassisted. Yep. I own a belt, but it doesn't fit me. I bought one from Rogue once, and it's just too small. <laughs> was it that extra small one, or what was it? I probably. I just it sucks because I'm like, oh, I'm gonna use a belt like all the big boys do, and then I got one, and I was like, oh god, I can't fucking breathe. This <laughs> my my uh, sister texted me last night, and she said, hey, um, do Bill and Chase um uh like you? I'm like, I don't know. I'll ask them. I was like, well, that's a, but, but I, I was thought it was funny because my sister like has I like this, on the show. My, my sister, well, who knows? My, my, my sister has this same thought about, like, I think no one likes me too. It's kind of a weird place to be in, but like, I never thought, like, I guess sometimes I slip and I'm like, I just assumed you guys did like me. 
Oh yeah, <laughs> dude, totally. I told you, you're, you're you're my guy to talk to if I need to be like, hey, give me the real on this. But okay, what good. you've always done is you make people very nervous because you don't pull punches on your questions. You just go straight out. Elephant in the room. That's what we're talking about right there. Why I always Boom. walked away from you when you came at, with a camera at the regionals or games. I'd like, talk to Bill. Yeah. <laughs> talk to Bill. That's like, um, that's like, well, you know, it's funny you say that is so, so look, this, this lady, um, uh, Betsy, Sari, Sari, a uh, look into Hiller's videos about masters athletes cheating. Didn't think it would be real, but then I started looking at masters video submissions myself. He's actually right. Like that kind of shit does actually make me feel uncomfortable. I don't want, well, all the questions I ask make me feel uncomfortable, but like, I really don't want to like look at stuff like that for some reason. Like when I talk to, um, the, the, the two examples were like when chase interviewed Ricky, I was like so happy chase did that. So I didn't have to do any of that. Man. I did not want to ask him about his dr uh, drug use. I wanted to ask him whether okay. I should do it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, that should help me. Like, I didn't want to, like, from? yeah. That was, I was so, that was the most stressed yeah. out I've ever been. Broadcast, podcast, other than maybe, like, my first broadcast at the CrossFit Games. Tell like me why. Why Why did it stress you out to ask this question? I mean, I, I, I would not have wanted to do what you did. but t but uh, So I get it. But I want to know, hear it from you. I think the big part of it is I just wanted to do it right for Ricky and right yeah. for the community too and so it's like yes do i is it fun asking all these questions up front no but what i really want to do is like bang out the first four yes or no's did you do it on purpose like just get that out of the way so that people can just like chill out put their pitchforks away ricky can answer the hard questions first and then we can just have a conversation of everything that happened because he hadn't talked about anything and what i wanted for ricky is just like Let's get all of this out of the way so the next time you're in front of the camera, you can just be yourself. And that nobody yeah. has these like, I mean, they can think what they want after they hear the facts and what happened as opposed to just make up their own story about Ricky. And so what I wanted to do for that podcast was to just get all of the four years of like hate or unknown out of the way so that Ricky can just move on from there. And there's I this saying that all problems must flourish before they come to an end. And you kind of did that. You like, OK, let's just fucking bring this thing to a head. Let's push all, every, yeah. like everything up to the head. Yeah. And so I wanted to get the communities like all of their questions out of the way, all the crap we've heard for four years. Do it for Ricky to get past it. And then people can just be like, I don't agree with this or I think he's lying, as opposed to just making up their own narrative about the unknown. And so that, that was the hard that part. Both of them. That, and that was tough because I didn't want to come off as like soft and not asking. It's like people wanted to know, did you do it on purpose? Did your brother do it knowingly when he got busted? Like. And I think a lot of great things came out of that for him where it just totally cleared the air after four years. And now he's just Ricky. And that's what I wanted to do. Would it have been more fun to just like shoot the shit with him? Yes. But I felt like that was needed to get it out of the way. And I wanted to make sure that I did it right for Ricky and then right for CrossFit side too. Cause it's on, you know, it's the CrossFit games podcast and I didn't want it to be like a puff piece thing. And so I got to, it wasn't puff piece. Piece. I'll tell you that it yeah. was far from puff piece. It was yeah, fucking like, hardcore. It was like the kind of thing you have to watch in segments. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it, it was, uh, it was so intense. It was so much information. There was so much online. Hey, um, uh, so, sorry, Susa, are yep. they early? Is Joseph early? No, or are we one minute? No. About 45 okay. minutes. In. Okay. Just let me know. I'm going to, I'll drop off. I'm going to, I'll bring them in. Okay, cool. Um, and, and what was his response to you, Chase afterwards? Like, are you guys close now? Uh, I wouldn't say we're, I mean, we'll like message back and forth and, you know, honestly, I had no real opinion of Ricky on a personal level. I just, when he got busted for it, I was like, douche, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and that was it. And I didn't try to take it too personal towards him. Um, but afterwards we had, it was really cool. Like he was very appreciative, very thankful. He was so nervous. Like that dude is not a real social person and he doesn't want to be on camera and he doesn't want to answer these questions and i totally get it and afterwards yeah me neither yeah, had, i wouldn't want to do good, that either. a good level of respect and appreciation like i appreciated him taking the time he appreciated me not like just trying to tear him down i just wanted to peel off basically like the old snake skin and just let new ricky come come back into the fold so we uh we have a good relationship i haven't actually got to sit down with them in person i was hoping we could do that in wadapalooza but 
both hey, of us kind of sick beforehand. And, and once again, putting thing in relative context, compared to being a fucking uh, pedophile, a fucking rapist, uh, someone, a governor of a state that put ten, killed tens of thousands of old people by putting them in old folks' homes while COVID was fucking running rampant in there. He's nothing. He's fucking nothing. He's, he's a just, saint. He's just he a dumb the, kid. He, he's, he's, he's a just, yeah, it, it, it's it's absolutely nothing steroid use compared to fucking anything that really re, any really bad shit that happens in the world. Speaking of steroid use, uh, the only uh, cinematographer in the business who's openly using steroids today, <laughs> Joseph, uh, <laughs> Joseph, life of Josie. Oh, I'm gonna take a stab at it. What's up, everyone? How are you guys doing? Somakian, Somakian, Somakian. Yeah, Somakian, Matosian, same uh, same origin, you know. Joseph Somakian. Seven, do you rem remember how to pronounce my name? Fuck yeah, I say it all the time. I say, um, uh, you are, um, uh, your name is, um, um, oh, I'm going to tell you, hold on. Um, <laughs> um, come on, come on uh, now. Come on. No, I know. Hold on, hold on. Darn it. I had something really funny to say, but I'm going to, I, I can't, <laughs> can't remember. Uh, what, wait, what's the guy's name in Iceland? Uh, uh, a B oh, your name is Bjorgvin? Carl Goodmanson. Yeah, no. something something like that. Very, very Gabriella close. Magawa. Those are yeah. two names. Gabriella Magawa and um, Bjorgvin Carl Goodmanson. Um, these are some of my um, pride and joy. Next to my kids, these are my two favorite accomplishments in life. <laughs> <laughs> How many kids do I have? Three kids. Uh, Joseph, I sent the link um, without your approval to Chase and Bill also. So we all got to see uh, your fabulous piece. I know it was a rough draft. I told them it was a rough draft, uh, but congratulations. Thank you. Coming from you, it means a lot. Yeah. Um. How did you guys meet? How did it, how does, are, are you on that island with her too? Yeah, I live on the island it, now. I got influenced it, it, uh, a year ago. <laughs> how, how, and where were you born? I was born in Cyprus. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I was born in Cyprus, then I moved to France for my parents' job when I was like three years old. And then I kind of moved around a bit to my parents' job, university. Um, and then I got into this whole like CrossFit space a couple of years back. And pretty much I was traveling all around. And then when COVID hit, I was living. I went back to Belgium, which is where I did high school. All of my friends lived there. My mom lives there. And I was just in this, that routine, you know, comfort zone. I was like, okay, I got to move from there. And about a year ago, um, so I, I met Christoph, the, the big Hungarian bear, a year and a half ago on a, on a fit eight shoot. And that's, um, that's uh, uh, Gabriela Magawa's keeper, right, Christoph? Exactly. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so I met Christoph a year and a half ago, a little bit more. And, uh, and last year in January, he was like, hey, you should come to, to Mallorca, uh, hang out for, for a couple of days. And I was like, sure. So came a year ago. Since then, I came, I think, like five times uh, in the span of 12 months. And uh, and I knew I wanted to, like, move from Belgium. And I was like, okay, I want to come to, to New York. The weather's good. The people are cool. The gym's awesome. And here we are. You've been, you've been telling us that you are moving here for, like, eight months. Yeah, I know. And I, and I moved here in the end. <laughs> How old are you? I'm uh, 27. And, and, and did you come with anyone or you just come by yourself? Do you have a girlfriend or a wife or a dog or? No, no. I just, uh, I just packed my bags, two suitcases, told my mom goodbye, my friends goodbye. And I just got on a plane. Dang. And, and do you work specifically with uh, Gabriella while you're there in, in Mallorca? No, I, 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 do, I do a bunch of stuff. I work a lot with, uh, with Hustlemate and Craig Ritchie. I, I think these guys took me under their wing uh, two and a half years ago. So I do a lot now. Because obviously Christoph and, and Jack and their Hustlemate athletes. Um, we do a lot with, uh, with go up mobility first as well. And other than that, it's more just whatever comes, comes. And if I have to travel for work, I'll travel, but I'll just come back here. Cause it's very easy to travel from here. And I mean, I'm in the, in the gym with the camera every day, so I might as well snap content for, for Gabby and, and help her out. And what you're doing though, now you're doing a series. The series is called all gas, no breaks. The story of the sixth fittest woman on earth. And you call it the uh, the 2022 games lead up. So my first question is this: Is it going to actually be a lead up, or is it going to be all the way to the end of the games? No, it's it's going to be all the way to um, to the end of the games. Okay, so we'll uh, uh, we'll do a little edit on that and just cross up leading up. Okay, 
just, just cross that over. Right? <laughs> so, let's project we're going to make it to the end of the games, right? Yeah, so so the idea also in terms of Thank you boys for laughing at my jokes. This, this <laughs> language barrier over here. These Europeans, they don't make it fucking anything easy. They got they got they're like all all of them are like 10% Laura Horvat. Like they just like stone. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby, no, do you hate it when people mispronounce your name? So, I got the um... I got to Dude, she it. sorry, Gabby. She has a fucking letter in her name, Chase, that fucking us in the Western Hemisphere have never seen. So I give us a fucking break. It's an amazing Polish letter, and it's really unique. It's only uh, only in Poland, so I'm I'm gonna be very proud. And um, I decided that this season I'm gonna teach everyone how to pronounce my name. I was going with the flow. I was like, at some point, <laughs> I was like, okay, they're never gonna learn how to pronounce it. But then. We talked before the games, seven, yeah, I think uh, before the games, and you were able to pronounce it right. So I was like, okay, since now, <laughs> other other needs to know how to say it as well. You, you guys, as athletes, uh, they just started doing it at the games where they would do the, um, when you check oh, in, yeah. you'd have to do the, my name is, and you say your name. That is the <laughs> only way that as broadcaster will have any idea of how to say it. Mm. Other than that, we're going to use whatever american version we can come up with as we're saying the name and we'll do the best we can and hopefully hopefully we don't butcher it up too bad <laughs> um so yes please if you want it to say a certain way say it and that's not that's not being a that's not being uncool or being a jerk or anything that's like help us to make you look good Just yeah, it, it is fun say. saying the hard names right it is fun it's a sense of accomplishment Man. It's just so awkward they just gave us a microphone okay say your name who are you um, <laughs> Gabriella, and then I'm thinking, should I say? <laughs> I actually, should, say with it. should I go with actually not real surname and say Migala or Migawa? But then I, this year I, I went with Migawa, and I'm very happy about that. You should be. Um, J Joseph, so so the series is a is a serious commitment. Like I know long forms a, a, is is like it's a lot. It's it's like the shit that like you think you're done at midnight and but you're not done till two for just changing the little shit. Um, are, how many how many parts is this going to be? Are you ready for it? Yeah, I'm ready for it. I think it's something that I've I've meditated on a, a long time. Uh, I thought it like the project was in my head pretty much since the games last year. I I had it in mind that it's more like if I do something, I want to do it well. So I really thought about it, and then I was like, okay, let, let's just do it. Um, so yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be, so there's this episode and there's like, one, two, three, four. there's, there's, I think seven more episodes after this one, seven or eight. And when's the first one premiere? Tomorrow evening. And Your we'll, time. and we'll put a, we'll put a, it, it, has it already been scheduled? Can people already set a reminder on it? Uh, no, there's like, so we're going to do a screening tonight. Um, and then I'll go back to the editing room and just change a couple of things, do the color grading, and then we'll probably upload it tomorrow morning with the premiere. And it'll be on um, Gabriella Magawa's uh, uh, YouTube channel. Yes. Gabriella, when we follow, and, and feel free to uh, slap me down here, Joseph, um, or, or, or put in your, in your part. When we follow athletes, there's a crazy commitment on our part as filmmakers, crazy commitment. And shit can get sideways, right? Like you could find out tomorrow you're pregnant. Um, any, any fucking thing can happen. And are you committed to like the story regardless of, of, of what happens? You know, let, let's say you get to episode – like, like I mean, obviously the greatest outcome that could fucking possibly happen is uh, – I mean, theoretically is, is that you go and you're the one who dethrones Tia. Like, holy shit, that would end up becoming the greatest story in CrossFit history. No one's ever dethroned a champ, really, like the mega champs. And it's never happened. And maybe Chase and Bill would argue with me there. But but other shit can happen, too, sideways. You could get fucking um, bit by a dog tomorrow in the gym, and the whole story could just change direction, right? Are you ready to be that vulnerable now that um, Joseph has made that commitment? Joseph, you can pay me on the side later for doing this. <laughs> I mean, so so far. Or, or Christoph leaves you for for a dude in Mallorca. Let's make, <laughs> let's throw that in there too. I mean, when I think about it, that for sure, um, 
would make the video uh, what's this like uh, video viewing very popular and probably i would be able to earn a, a lot of money from uh, my youtube channel so there are some positives in this oh you're you're so, so positive nice yeah <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't cry too long i guess uh but like seriously um to basically i know josie for over a year or maybe two years now no one year one year yeah one year i just feel so com comfortable and so uh i'm not feeling awkward and i don't really notice sometimes when Jos josie is filming and i'm 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 being real with uh, all the material and behind the scenes so I think everything, everything in this doco is really uh, how I'm in real life. I got I got I got a question. When you're when you're so we've done like reality show type stuff at the fire station where they try to get you know the the real life behind what's actually happening. How it's always nice to be able to turn off. So like, do you guys have like a safe word? Like, no, you're not filming now. <laughs> Or is it like you got full access, like, go for it? How's that work? Uh, so what I agree is, like, basically we, we can film uh, everything. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be the one deciding if, if this can be on the docu documentary of, or not. Like, So I'm still in control what's going to be out there. And I feel like what's crazy the about that, though, is the most vulnerable parts will be the most popular parts. And, I, you know, I, I can think of bad examples of things that happening, too. I don't I, God forbid any of those. But like the the more intimacy this has, like, will you guys push? Will you push back, Josie, too? Like if if uh, you see her crying and she's like, hey, I don't want this in here. Will you give her some space for like a day and then come back to her and be like, hey, Gabriella, I think this is this is what you want to show the world. I think emotional intelligence plays a lot when you're trying to make a series like this. And so like, I, I kind of know when is the good time to film, when is the bad time to film. So for example, like tomorrow we have like the, the quarterfinal start after tomorrow. Like I'm, I'm, how do you say, like I'm mature enough to like know that like if she does really bad in a workout, like I'm not going to go and stick the camera straight in her face. Like I might film from far away and then maybe wait 10, 15, 20 minutes and then I'll, I'll approach, but I'm not going to stick camera straight in the face. And I think that's just a natural thing. Um, so yeah, but otherwise it's like all access. Like there, there's a camera in the gym pretty much every day. I was I was in the desert once. I can't remember which desert it was. It was in a salt flat somewhere. I want to say it was in China. And I was filming a runner who was running across the desert. And it was really fucking hot. It was like 100 degrees outside, but off the salt flat, it was like it felt like it was like 180. And I was scared. I had I had walked out there a couple miles from our base to to film the runners coming in. And a runner was down on the ground in the salt flats as I approached him. And he's like, I need water. I've run out of water. I need water. And I'm sitting there filming it knowing I got fucking just tons of water. <laughs> And another filmmaker comes up on me and goes, dude, give him fucking water. I'm like, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it turned into quite the, a nasty exchange between me and the other filmmaker. Of course, I filmed that, too. Um, it's intense, right? It's like you, you got to you, – you have an obligation to her, too, knowing that she's going to want you to film stuff. Stuff could happen that, she, that is important for you to get even if it's um, not comfortable to get at the time. Like, like in, there are those weird moments, you know, I remember following Josh Bridges one year off the, off the regional ground as he didn't qualify. And I was scared, like he could punch me in the face, but I was like, all right, fuck. I'll kind of try to hide behind his camera. But Gabby too, like, have you realized that you being a part of this, you like, you kind of have to accept that too. Like if you're willing to put the good stuff in, you have to put the bad stuff in too. No, of course. It's just like, um, I agree that it's good to have content, maybe no matter what, it's not really a good word, but I don't mind Josie uh, filming the bad stuff as well, but I just want to feel comf uh, comfortable with that at the end of the day, if I'm not going to fully feel good about posting those stuff, I'm going to have a final word uh, yeah. at this. So like everything behind the scenes is uh, it, it's being filmed. So we are having those uh, more vulnerable moments yeah. and maybe not the, the proudest moments out there. Yeah. But, but yeah, I think it's important as well. You, you guys know Gary Vaynerchuk? 
Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so one of the most important pieces of advice I've ever got in life, especially when it comes to content, it's, it's document, don't create. Mm. And I've, I've tried to stuck, stick to that as much as possible. Where it's like, like in this documentary, like except her sitting down for an interview, like absolutely nothing is staged. Like I, and I told Gabby from the beginning, I was like, if we do this, like it's going to be f- full documentation. Like I will never ask you like, hey, pour a tea in a cup or I don't know, start using like a massage gun there. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like we, we really want to really want to like document it properly without having any like stage stuff, which can happen sometimes. I guess I don't mean the bad stuff as a negative, like uh, maybe the tough things, like having an interview after maybe you don't have a great workout or you know something goes wrong. I think those are the things that make you more relatable. And the bad stuff is probably the wrong context, but the t- the tough moments mm-hmm. I think are just as important as the fun ones because you get a better idea of who you are and how you operate. And, and that humanizing you, I think is something that draws you to the fan base and your friends much more than um, highlighting you. I think that's a big part of, of what Josie's doing. Okay. Yeah, I hate talking after Chase. I never want to talk after Chase because then people <laughs> can like compare your tone with his and his voice with his. Sorry, go ahead, Joseph. Like, like even last year doing semifinals, and I, I don't even think she knows it, but there was a workout where she wasn't feeling very happy. Remember the snatch workout? Yeah. And you were crying after the workout. I still like I shot that. Like that's somewhere in a hard drive. And so that's, I think it's important to have because then also, like you said, it's more relatable to people. It's always good to shoot and then not show, then be like, hey, don't shoot this. It's uncomfortable. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, like always shoot and then you can edit later. You, no one's ever like, shit, I have too much. I have too much of this person struggling. It's always like, okay, I'm glad we have this. We've taken some space from it. Now we can see. Um, the piece is really, really good. And I want to, and maybe this is just my bias. And and and, and sorry, Gabrielle, I'm going to make you vulnerable to Ch- Chase and Bill's criticism here. But there's very something very special about Gabriella Magawa in my mind as a fan of the sport, which I'm not. Um, that <laughs> um, you have a chance. There's not a lot of people who have a chance to beat Tia. There are some really good girls in the space, but they have some massive holes. And there is this thing about you that we're not sh- we, we and, and we've seen these girls enough to know that where their holes are and we're concerned that they're never going to fill them, I think. Concerns too strong, but but we don't we we think it's we don't see any sign of the holes being filled. With you, we don't see any limits to you yet. On every single branch on your tree is growing. So we're like, you know, although Laura keeps taking second, we're, we're seeing like, oh, wow, this Gabriella Magawa girl of all the girls maybe in that top 10. There's just branches and buds and just shit shooting off everywhere. And, and, and you have, I think, the greatest potential. What do you think about that, Bill and Chase? Absolutely. You're trending up in a big way. Yeah, I mean. huge, huge. Um, I, I think with- and that's exciting for Joseph, too. Like, he's, he's got the good horse. <laughs> what's, what's, what's really great about Gabby is she has – so much uh youth experience so like you know the teen games and uh i mean she's been battle tested a lot already and she's still young and i'm hoping that she gets the shot before tia starts to decide that she wants to hang her shoes up you know what i mean like we want to see the big champs get knocked off by someone rather than them just retiring out um And, you know, you're right. I mean, you know, Gabriella, you're doing great as far as like what you're doing, as far as what you're shoring up the pieces getting into that position. Um, I, I, I love and like watching Rogue was great. Mm-hmm. Watching watching you push in Rogue, push Tia in Rogue. I mean, and, and granted, Tia is an anomaly. I mean, she's so damn good at everything. Um, but it's really cool when you when you get that jump ahead and it's like ah, i'm right here i am right by in the the like you don't have like you're in a win-win situation technically you're not supposed to win so if you don't no one's thinking anything but there's no pressure on you to beat her other than i'm coming for you tia I'm i don't know like, i think that, that pressure is there a little bit though now on her more so than the other girls there's a little bit there's some there's some I, th- I think it's it's creeping. Yeah, but that's, a, di- but that's that a different too. kind. That's a different kind of pressure. If she doesn't do it, if if she doesn't win, it's not going to be like oh, it's over. Because 
I mean, look at what's been. Nobody has done it. So right, right. You're right that the pressure is more like, oh, come on, you got it, you got. It. It's more of like a positive pressure rather than a negative pressure. Whereas Tia, everyone's like, are you gonna mess it up? Are you gonna mess it up? All right, when you're mm -hmm. at the top, you have nowhere to go but down. When you're below that, you have everywhere to go but up. And so I think it, I think you're in a great spot. It's just super cool to watch. Uh, yeah, I mean, how much? Sorry, I, how I, much I, do you work with the other girl? Like. Sorry. I just want to say one thing that um, that's it's uh, amazing to hear all the good words. It's just a little bit awkward as well to just sit here and like um, <laughs> take a bunch of compliments. Good. Yeah, good. <laughs> awkward is, should be the name of this show. Awkward. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. It, it's great. But like, like you said, I, I'm, I, I feel more like I have nothing to lose, and I still then, I still have no idea where my limits are. So, I'm just trying to keep um, become being better and we'll see. I think there should be no pressure for all the girls. T is so damn good. Like what, what pressure do you have of trying to get first place? Like, to be honest, you should have no pressure. It should be really fun and exciting for you guys. And you're all trending up. Um, Laura's obviously been the closest in the last four years, getting second twice. I think it's going to take a collection of you guys to even start to like bring Tia back. It's not going to just be yourself. Do you, do you talk with Laura about that at all? Cause she's super excited to try to take the title while Tia is still in it. Do you have that same sense of, of urgency when you're competing? I mean, I don't have like those past years, um, uh, teach me to be more patient and just trust the process. So I don't feel this need of like do it now or something bad's gonna happen and uh, i just want to make it clear like we are not creating some kind of unit with laura to <laughs> take the or anything like that which is like i assume you guys that. hate each other i don't i don't think you guys are a unit i assume you and laura hate each other so just so you no, know no, no, no. we we don't hate each other so oh, okay well i'm still i still it, us, we just want to win the game and that's the thing. Is is the goal to win the games or is the goal to do the best I can and to get on the podium and do, you know, <laughs> like, am I, am I going to try to, like, are you going to try to game or are you swinging for the fences trying to take her down, trying to take Tia down? I'm going to try to be the best version of myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I don't understand people who just, um, like, participate participate in something like if you are God doing this you. game if you are training hard and you sacrifice everything I, I don't really like word sacrifice but you are committing everything to the process and you don't want to win i don't know why you're doing this so joseph as selfishly i'm hoping that you get her going like god i fucking tea i want to get her god <laughs> like i want to yeah. see like i like that that's the because that's the athlete like not the Yes, you know, I'd like to do the best that I possibly can, and I'm hoping that I, you know, strategize. It's I want to see that. I want to see the athlete. I because we're all athletes here, and we all know, like in, like inside, what you're saying is, I want to beat you. I hope she trips on this one. Gosh, she didn't trip on this. Damn it. I'm coming for you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's that's real. That's real. That's not being a jerk. That's being real. Please. It's, it's very interesting video. to see that the, when we shot the first set of interviews, which was kind of like giving also me context for the storyline, it's like she said something, and we'll, we'll probably elaborate on that later in the series, which is like there's two types of Gabby. There's Gabby when she puts the shoes on, and there's mm -hmm. Gabby when she takes the shoes off. And it's like two different people. And it's like Gabby outside with like the shoes off, like one of the most genuine natural people I've ever seen in my life. And then the Gabby with the shoes on, that's like a complete different story. So we're going to try and also like show – later on the series like okay like the two sides of it it's funny you say that when I, we had um uh, gabriella magawa on the podcast the very first time i was like I, I was just dreading it i was dreading speaking to a foreigner the fucking cadence of their voice the fucking the back and forth the the phone connection overseas and afterwards i got off i think it was with brian i was like holy fuck that girl's so fucking cool she was so light she was so fun all the miscommunication we just had fun with it no one took it serious we just we just jumped over each other we were like just three kids playing <laughs> and uh but but in this but in this series that you shot with her episode one this is i the only other athlete i can think of who takes themselves this like this vicious is Sam samuel cornwaye like he's not fucking around i'm there to <laughs> fucking take your lunch beat you and fucking go home and be with my kids again like and i i get that i get that from gabriella in in part one that you were so generously let us watch last night sneak preview this is not a joke 
this is she played she she started tennis late which is one of the steepest learning curves of any sport she played for seven years she pivoted over to crossfit she wins her first competition or she does her first day of crossfit um and, and has to learn how to snatch on her first day she's not she's kind of excited by the challenge but isn't the super fan three months later she wins her first competition as a crossfitter and she's like all right fuck it i'm in <laughs> and here she is and like and like i i, I I'm, not, I'm not as i'm not as smart as uh, uh chase on this saying that maybe it takes a collective but i really want to emphasize i don't see anyone from my little fanboy perspective with the ascent that she has i don't see any girls with this this potential i see some major roadblock for some of the greatest women in the sport and i don't see those yet for gabriella we we don't know we don't we can't we can't always be like oh she's really bad at pull-ups like we can't find we haven't there's not like there's all the other girls we had there's this thing that all the commentators and pundits be like oh man her hair's always in her face she should cut that shit like we <laughs> we have something to say about them that's holding them back we don't know what the fuck that is for gabriella she's a it's, it's a she's a force of nature right now and she's just like going in that direction so Gabby, um, for you, what is something that you feel like you need to work on to ascend to that? Uh oh, oh, uh, that's not cool, Chase. That's <laughs> not cool. I'm just cool. saying, like, she doesn't want us to. If you don't want us to, like, compliment you, this entire podcast is like everyone has their hole. And Sam push it for Laura, strength for Haley, age and experience for Mal. Like, that's those are the things that are holding them back. Period. They will not win the cross of games if they don't fix that. So if you're on this big ascent, like, what Real are some with of the Chase things Ingram. you? I'm just saying, what are the some of the things you have been focusing on? to keep climbing towards that podium and eventually the top of the podium. You know what, actually, Sevan mentioned this. So yesterday I got so um, angry or like so annoyed at my hair because they are- <laughs> And I chose that because I kept seeing your ponytail and the slow-mo's <laughs> coming to your face. Exactly, and I really enjoy to have long hair, but then yesterday it's not even about the long ponytail. It's just like, they are so heavy. So <laughs> that wants to have to hold them, and I just just went to my friend at the gym. I was like, "Okay, I'm done. I think I should shave my head." <laughs> imagine, imagine how badass I would look like. And I think I mean, like, that, like Nate O'Connor is a badass too. Exactly. I, I think I would I would finally um, um, cut some attention from the media at the CrossFit Games. Would you shave your head if it meant you could podium at the CrossFit game? Exactly. Imagine that. Or like, I would be so much faster in the water. I think so. I hope Look, so. Joseph, is this making you feel uncomfortable? You started twitching and shit. You're no, no, I was, I was thinking like, that's all like aerodynamics and stuff with the shaved, with the shaved head. Like that's, yeah. And maybe uh, I wouldn't have to wear a swimming cup. Yeah. They'll probably still make you do it because to get, they have to decide between men and women out on the <laughs> That's what. Well, here's the thing. I'd be like, that sounds a little wild, but like that's what Matt Fraser would do come competition season. He'd shave his head. That's one less thing for him to worry about. Oh, I love your hair. I love your hair. I love your hair. I'm voting I against it. Maybe I should keep them. I, I like your hair, but but I use that as an example because I would see in the slow mo your ponytail come over and come in front of your eyes, and that's and and, and you do see that in, in the in the in the series quite a bit, and it's pretty obvious that it's fucking a pain in the ass, but. But I do love your hair. Um, you. um, Joseph, are, are, is it just like mind boggling to you that you just get to film? It was mind boggling to me when I would film that you just get to film just beautiful bodies all day long and like like high powered bodies. It's like the difference between guys who shoot commercials, let's say, for like Ford Festiva versus like you're the you're the propaganda guy for Ferrari. I mean, do you trip like you don't film any shitty cars? Like I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed to to do it, but at the same time, like now it's it's my full time thing, and like I feel like since I do it every day, sometimes I don't necessarily like appreciate it as much as I should. Yeah. I do it every single day. So sometimes when I go back, like now I'm going back home for two weeks, and I'm not going to shoot anyone, and I'll probably be like, oh, I miss it. I want to go back. But I it, mean, it, you have Gabriella in one of these videos. I don't know if you shot it, and she's walking at the camera. It's in slow mo, and then her eyes look up. And I'm just like, oh, I just know that feeling when you get one of those shots, and the athlete looks right into your camera after looking down. You're like, holy shit! Yeah, it's, it's, it's like the best feeling because you you know, like you're filming it, and deep down, you're like, okay, this is gonna look so good once it's exported. Yeah. Uh, regarding that, I uh, actually it was. Sometimes it's so funny to do interviews with Josie because I'm sitting on the couch. He's asking me questions, and you know, like it, it's very hard for me to to not make any mistakes. 
uh, on the interview because I'm trying so hard and la- like English is very hard and blah, blah. And then I just see Josie across me and he's like, <laughs> I'm in this flow he knows it's gonna be a good line I'm like okay just focus just go with it don't laugh don't laugh and yeah it was, it was just so, so I, I will tell you something I, I, I can't speak on behalf of all um, filmmakers but a lot of us really love our subjects like we have a um, especially like when you work with someone like Josie's working as close with you, or I see him, he takes a lot of pictures of Christoph. There's this, you start to really, really, I can't, I can't really, you really invest yourself in, in the person you're shooting your emotion, yeah. their success and like their performance at the end of the day. Yeah. You beyond admire them. You it's crazy, it, it, but it, but it is, but it is really, really intense for those of us um, who, it, we, we love it. We feel blessed, but also we're like crazy protective over you. And it's nuts. It's, it's a weird thing staring at someone all day through, through, through a lens. Um, especially someone as they come up, like, and then, and then the rest of the world gets a hold of them. I remember when I first started filming with rich and then the rest of the world gets a hold of them. And it's, it's, it's a weird thing. I don't want to say it's sad. You're excited for them, but it's, um, I, I know that, I know that when you go places and like people will film you now, Josie will be like protective over you. And it, it's a, uh, it's a trip. It's like and probably protective over Christoph. And, and then it got really popular. Like, no, these are the guys I listened to before they were popular. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, you bring a lot of, um, old school grit, Gabby, uh, Gabriella. It's, it's cool. It's cool. You bring a lot of old school grit and I hope you'll, you'll keep with that. And like, like, yeah, you, there's a, you, there's a competitive spirit in you that's really um, cool to see. Thank you. So I, I have a question for you guys. As obviously OGs of the sport, you guys know the sport. What what more do you guys want to see in this? Like, Ooh. what's the things you're like? Okay, like I I want more of this in the series because we're all about feedback here. So we're we're gonna listen to you guys. I I, I want I want well I already told you what I want. I want like the real. I want the inside. I don't want the, all right, let's sit down and have this interview and let's talk about how the workout went today. Like the, the comments, the, where she doesn't necessarily know she's being recorded or she's just talking to whatever, or like the inner, like the inner athlete talk. I, as an athlete, I like watching the mindset of different athletes on how they work. I think it'd be really interesting because tennis with a tennis background, there's so much mental game in tennis insane you know i mean like the fact of you mess up on a a point and you're having to deal for the next two and a half hours on playing that out and you know are are you having that compilation of 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 frustration and are you able to handle that and manage it there's so much and you watch tennis i'm not even a big tennis fan but you watch the athlete and the self-talk and the how they're moving and like that kind of stuff to me is an athlete and even as a commentator like i as a broadcaster i like watching that because i can weasel myself into their head and be like okay the way they're walking the way they're acting are they going to get this next rep are they going to get this next list are they going to get that next point and be able to call that is huge so i love watching that the, the more inner stuff you get man i don't i don't care i don't care how gabri how gabriella answers how the workout goes or what does she think her chances are with this or how she feeling as a work to me, everyone's going to say the same thing. I want to know what she's really thinking. I like to see some of your game planning when you approach like, Hey, you get it, get an event. Say, say the quarterfinals come up and you're, you know, you're talking to Gabby is like, Hey, what are your thoughts on this? Like, I would like to see some of your thought process, Gabby, on how to approach this. Cause I mean, you're not giving away any secrets. You're talking about you and your skill set. So I think, your mental approach and how you're going to attack some of these workouts would be cool to see. And then it would be really neat to see that play out on film while you're actually doing the workout. I think that'd be really neat. I, I would like to know how, um, I would like to know like the most intimate stuff about her life, how and her and Christoph met, whether they're planning on getting married, does she want to have kids? What her life was relationship was like with her father why, why is she pushing so hard? What, who is she trying? What, what is her motivation? What is she trying to prove on the deepest level? What is her, what is her real relationship with God? Does she cure? Is she curious where she's going to go when she dies? Um, 
I don't know if we if we're gonna fit everything. <laughs> I well, we should, Joseph opened the door, so I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, fuck it, let's just bomb. But like, I I'd like to see, I'd like to see, um, I I just like to see that. I I love to see what fucking makes them tick. This little, I know a, a friend of mine told me one time, you know why our friendship has lasted so long? And he goes, why? He goes, because I just picked something really tiny about you that I liked in the second grade when we met. And so it lets all the other shit about you change. Mm. And so I just pictured these, these fucking Titans like Gabriella finding there's one little tiny thing that they circle and guard in my mind. And fr- it's like it's like a nuclear explode. But this thing, man, when this thing gets activated, it's just fucking radiates through their whole being. And the rest of the world dude, doesn't matter compared to this little. I just imagine there's this thing they circle that's their secret. The secret's not the right word, but and so I just like um, and some of them don't even have a word for it. Right. Or they're not even. But this is not a normal girl. This is not a um, one of the reasons why tennis is so fucking crazy is because there's no clock. If you're on the court, you can still win the mm. whole fucking thing. No matter how bad you've been playing. And so it's always on you. You're always in control of your destiny. Tennis is nuts. It's God, the never greatest mental that. fuck of all time. It's horrible. <laughs> and you're out there by yourself. And, and Gabrielle has done that to herself now. She's gone from tennis to CrossFit. She's like, it's, it's, there's, she's searching for some, or not searching. You don't have to say searching. She's embraced, you could say that, some sort of challenge. And I'd like to know what, what, you know, I'd like to, to sense that. So I'd, I'd like to see her and Kristoff fight. I'd like to see them fight. Uh, we never fight. <laughs> <laughs> just like we're doing it for fun, right? Just like we're doing it for fun. And I'll stage like that shit, yeah. Joseph. Stage that shit, yeah. Joseph. Just a bad uh, double under day, and then you shave your hair off because you got tired of it. <laughs> just I want to see Kristoff's face when, when, when Gabriella turns into Gabe. <laughs> Gabe. Like a... Uh, <laughs> Male version. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. But like, imagine that like Christoph uh, loves his um, new image with the shaving his head. So imagine the episode when we are actually shaving each other's head. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! That'll be next. That's level. some next level intimacy. Yes. <laughs> hey, how do you, how do you read these guys, Joseph? How do you read a uh, Laura Horvat or a Christoph? They're, they're so they're so. Like this is let me do this is my impression of Christoph laughing super duper hard. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> That's my but how do how do you read these guys? I don't like like Christoph and I, I feel like in, in a lot of senses we're we're very, very similar. Like we're very uh-huh. laid back, we're very much in our zone and like it's like we both have like I feel like we have like our own small circles and then around us it's like we're, we're social, but then it's, we have like an inner circle and, and that's how we vibe. So gotcha. that's, that's how I, I can, I can read him a bit, but you can always one, see you like, guys are one mind. Yeah. But you can always see on people's faces. Like I, I can always spot on people's faces, like how, how they feel. And like, like when you see someone, like I, I see these guys like every day, like I feel lo- like the other day, like I went to friends for like three days and they're like, yes, we have the impression you left for like three weeks. <laughs> that's awesome god you guys are having a blast that sounds so great yeah we have we have a we have a solid entourage here it's, it's amazing um anything else that you, you want to say before we go anything else um, you want to ask them bill and chase or anything else you want to tell us about the piece before it goes live joseph mm, no I appreciate obviously all your guys' feedback. It's amazing. I think we're both gonna learn from it. And I, at the end of the day, like this is a learning process for both of us. We're both trying to get uh, yeah. comfortable with uh, with what we're doing. And um, yeah, like like where shit's gonna get really serious is gonna be like once we start hitting like semifinals in the games. Like there's gonna be a whole team behind this. I mean, there's already a team behind this. Um, but like once we get semis in games, like we're we're gonna bring a proper production team as well. Um, to these events and and that's going to be like some next level shit oh dude it already looks beautiful go easy on yourself it is so beautiful and um uh, for those of you uh gabriella has been around uh crossfit uh since 2017 she was third on the podium as a kid and i was wondering i had a question for you chase is that you chase comment did you commentate the no that was brandon oh okay 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 all right. And so we have someone here. Again. 
We have someone here who's only been getting better since 2017. If you need any more motivation to follow the sport, this is the horse uh, you want to follow. And thankfully for Joseph Samakian, Life of Josie, um, you can you can get an intimate look at her life by at uh, Gabriella Magawa's um, YouTube page. Oh, you're going to hit a thousand subscribers. Everyone should subscribe so she can monetize. Yes. Yeah, everyone should subscribe so she can monetize. And then watch because you got to get the hours in too. It's not. Yeah, just we, we still need 3,900 3, hours of, of watch, but it'll come. We are getting that. Yeah, we'll get there. I'm yeah. pretty sure that'll happen very quickly for you, Gabby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you're getting your moment in the sun, Gabby. You've been working for it. You've been trending up, and it's good to see you out there. And I promise to get your name correct on future broadcasts. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have no, you don't get to say that. Bye. And bye. And you're out. Bam, you're gone. And is gone. Bam, you're gone. Bam, you're I gone. Can't. Yeah. Wow. You know what? You, I, it's They're funny. so pumped. It's, it's funny. I got, go ahead. Go ahead. It's funny that you said that uh, the thing with Kristoff with the, the, the laugh thing that you did. You did. When when I met those guys, when I met Christoph for the first time, I was like, "Wow, it was That's crazy!" Dubai, right? Uh, I met those guys there. That's where I kind of got to know them decently. And then I mm. saw them in Switzerland at an event out there. Oh, that's and cool. I was—I mean, we hung out, and, and those guys were. I'm like, I feel like I've known you guys for like five years, <laughs> and we really have just met. They were super. I mean, talkative. I mean, inquisitive. Uh, Christoph, man, like that guy at least outwardly like a bucket of like positivity. Yeah. Just super yeah. nice. I, I think that guy would be like an insane coach. I, I mean, he's a, he's a good athlete, but I think he would be like a really good coach. You know, I've never said, uh, Gabby's last name the right way because every time I say, is you're tardy. Like, <laughs> as, <laughs> as yeah, I can't talk for a living. Every time I say Magawa and there's that L there, at least they don't have the symbol when they write it out normally. I felt like that. What is that? Um, priest from Princess Bride. Oh, saying, ha! Man, Man, I, know, I feel like I feel like an idiot <laughs> that I can't pronounce her name correctly, but you know, I get it. If that's how it's said. So, so there was an Armenian guy on, and this guy wants to know. Christian wants to know Christian Lum if we're brothers, but I, but I can't tell if he's talking about me and Chase. He's got to be talking about no. Chase and I aren't brothers. We just get our hair product at the same place. <laughs> <laughs> I think me, you and Bill probably use the same hair product. I, I, I'm the younger brother because I obviously don't have as much gray hair. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> and you're still strong. <laughs> um. Oh yes, Mr. URL man. All the fun people from Poland. <laughs> Uh, so you, we, you didn't give me a chance to use the cool my cool transition when we we're gonna bring him in. You jumped you jumped the gun on me. I was oh, gonna, what was the transition? I was gonna hit him with this. That's the sound of a 360 degree barbell brush by Hybrid Athletics. And then boom, different people are on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was kind. That's kind of cool. I've never done that before. Brought like one show we did. We had two guests on. I think we had. Sarah on and then we brought Danielle on and then another show I had Nikki oh, yeah. Rodriguez on and I brought Danielle on at the same time that was like that scared the shit out of me but but it was fun like in a fun way um <laughs> but but that was really cool and I I was like wow with Bill and Chase there like I slept really good last night knowing you guys would be on because like I didn't have to, like the prep for the show is so easy I'm like oh, well, I if I just stop talking one of these guys will talk what like uh, I didn't sleep at all I was like fuck I'm gonna go and sleep <laughs> And get fucking fired. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't you worry. We got something for that too. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so Hey, funny. what happens to our background when there's all four of us? How come it doesn't go to the edges, Matt? See how it's like you can't we can make it go to the edges, I think, by this button. Like if I make you, you if go. I make you vanish, no. Too wait. close. Uh, Oh, see, so, then now you can see our coffee. sponsors, Paper Street Coffee, Barbell Jobs. I like that background, by the way. That's really cool. That is really cool. Thanks. Uh, Will yeah. just made it randomly. It's awesome. Um, all right. Well, thanks, guys. That was really cool. Um, may, uh, you don't have to answer now, but um, maybe I will. Oh, so so everyone here should go to get with the programming and subscribe. <laughs> And um, maybe this is kind of uh, originally I had called this the, um, Bill and Chase, the courtship, 
And I, kind of, <laughs> and I had to change the name of it because I was like courting them to come on the show more often. <laughs> um, but then the guy, we had Gabriella and Joseph on, so I had to take the courtship off and, and slide their names in there. But uh, thanks for coming on, and and, and hopefully we can um, dance, continue continue to dance some more. Yeah, thanks any time, dude. Yeah, anytime. We just got yeah. our thousand subscribers a couple of days ago on our. Oh yeah, yeah, Ooh. yeah! Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, did yeah. you see the? Did you see the little thousand email, the thousand subscriber email thing? No, because you always like check it and then sometimes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like log into our email. I'm like, we have 20 fucking comments that Bill hasn't responded to, but he just like clicked them all open. And now I have to go through and then see. Well, sometimes, yeah, but sometimes they're not like nothing to respond to. It's just like, uh, I agree with Chase and I don't agree with Bill or I agree with Bill and this is awesome. They should do this. Yeah. I just give him mm -hmm. a little thumbs up. Thanks for commenting. <laughs> the cool. comments are fucking crazy. They are. <laughs> the comments in YouTube, like sometimes, like people comment, I'm like, "What did you? What are, did they comment on the right show? <laughs> did they? Did they <laughs> that's comments what, on what, anything. What? Like half the comments I see on like any post, especially on like Instagram, I'm like, do you guys even know what this post is about or what you're even talking about? <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> like someone, the games posted the floor plans, and some guy was like, "Oh, heavy Diane's coming back." I'm like, "Where the fuck do you see that?" <laughs> Like, <laughs> what did you even look at the floor plans? Uh, just someone we had we had Liver King on, and someone in the comments said Matt and Sevon are completely out of their league. What? I said three like, words in two hours or three. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like are, they, because, are they talking about because he's because he's all buffed out or what? I I don't even know. I don't even know. I, told I don't even know. Like hey, I, I have to I have yeah. to say this. So I like I follow Liver King. I think I think he's like I enjoy watching him like I enjoy reading like a comic book. Like he's just he's just entertaining to me. Um, here, yes, here. yes. I, sure. I love that you guys had the whole talk about like the, you know, why is my beard all scraggly? And I just let this thing get all huge and I don't need to shave my beard. And I, but I'll go ahead and manicure my chest real fast. Yeah, so like I don't no. have any. <laughs> so it's like you're barbarian, but you manicure your chest, dude. Exactly. Come on now. Your oh. body. Uh, yeah, I gotta, I gotta ask him about it. that. Oh, uh, but ask I, him about that. I thought that was. I like. I I thought the show was fun. I think everything's fair game. Um, one of the biggest criticisms that people give him is that they're 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 claiming that he's misrepresenting his supplements. I've never thought that if I take those supplements, you're gonna that I will like look him? like him. Never in a fucking million years. He himself doesn't take those supplements except when he goes on the road. I, I think that people need to understand that the person that is like selling doesn't mean that they are what they do. I mean, like, look at, I mean, when we had Greg, when he was doing the CrossFit thing, Greg did not look like CrossFit. Like, you know, when you look at anyone else that does CrossFit, he just didn't look that way. So it, I, it, it would kill me when people would say, look at him. He doesn't look like anything. I'm like, I don't give a shit what he looks like. Right. Oh. Like, listen to what he's saying. You know Same what I mean? Same thing with people say liver kings on steroids. I'm like, what do I give a fuck? Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, like, okay. I'm, I'm looking at the information. I'm looking the at the information. The only problem I would have with that is if he goes, I took these supplements and I eat this way, and that's why I look the way I look, and that's what he builds. Like, I would have a problem with that because if he is taking Well, he does say he this. He does say this. He says, following the ancestral tenants, the nine tenants, whatever those are. Is that that um, like testosterone boosting nutritional? No, no, no. It's like, no, it's no, like it's don't a, it's keep like... your cell phone in your pocket. Oh, okay, sleep, yeah, yeah, okay, sleep. Um, you know, it's like it's like these things. Connect um, to the earth. Connect to the earth. And he's been working. He's, he claims that 35 years of training and eating raw meat. Or, uh, or organ meat has got him to where he's at. And, and these activities like the barbarian. And, and like – whether you believe him or it's like the other day, Ronnie Teasdale said something on his um, Instagram. Oh, your his name know. is not Ronnie. It's it's raw, raw, raw Robert. No, his name's fucking Ronnie Teasdale. <laughs> raw, 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 raw. He said, he said, if you want to experience, if you want to be like God, all you have to do is take all personal accountability and responsibility oh, for every little aspect of your life. And some people were offended. It's like you don't have to be offended. You can just try it. But I know you won't. I know you won't because it's so right much now, easier I'm to be offended. I can't do it. Well, yeah. So I just like people. I'm not going like, to shit on it. 
No, no, no. Can we tried it yet. I, I, I had it? a half pound of raw meat last night. I, I hear hearing that I'm like, man, you I don't like pate. I, do I don't think I could. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I barely like sushi. Oh, dude, you're so from Texas. No, it's true. Yes. <laughs> I want to say something about going down on your wife, but I think we should the show. <laughs> yeah. She won't listen to it. Uh, but it but it was fun. I thought it was. I like. I I like watching people do their thing, whatever that thing might be. And yes, it well was said. interesting. It was in, it was interesting watching him say what he said. I mean, it, once he got through, and this is not hating on him or even what he's doing, but like once he got through his sales pitch, I loved when you when you got when you finally got him down to real. Yeah, the talked, first thirty minutes were tough. Stuff. The f- yeah, and then yeah. we got into it. Yep, because he was talking his he was talking his talk, you know, and it's like, yep. I just want it like I want to know. Like, give me the real stuff. Like, don't tell me about, like, I don't want to hear about the tenants and I don't want to hear about the, this and the, that, and the, you got to live the barbarian and liver King out. And live, like, I mean, okay, man, that, that's, that's your thing. And that's cool. But it was cool when he actually got real. And it was like, you guys were talking about like, okay, well, what do you do? Like when your kids do this, because uh-huh. that's real shit. You can yeah. do whatever you want to do for yourself. I mean, even, even, you know, we have the, even the same kind of stuff in the gym. When you're, when someone wants to lose weight, they want to eat a certain way. They want to get healthier and you say, okay, you have to take out all the bread. You got to take out all of this. I mean, the simple stuff, you know, the, the, the hundred words of elite fitness stuff, even just go that simple. And they're like, yeah, I know, but my kids aren't going to eat anything else if they don't eat this. And I'm like, all right, well then you can either play that game with them or they don't eat or whatever, or I still want to get healthy or I want to see what it's going to do. Like I, I fast once a week, but I don't make my kids fast or anything like that. That's me. I want to do it. I want to test it out. I want to see what it does because I'm doing that piece for me. Um, but I, it was it was really it was interesting. It was interesting. I, I was so proud. I was so proud and on an ego trip high that I got him on the podcast. You don't even know. Like <laughs> I, I am a podcast slut, and I was like, holy shit! Like <laughs> big handsome dude just walked into the bar. I'm fucking sitting on his face. Like that was pumped. <laughs> I was pumped. I'm so and I like him. I I I, I I'm. Whatever his thing is, I love him. I'm good. So man. intense. Good. Yeah. So yeah. intense. Like it that that level of dedication and discipline. Regard like I could take all the steroids and HGH in the world and I'm not doing any of that shit. I just don't want to and I don't have the discipline or dedication. And I am a very disciplined and dedicated athlete, but that is so next level. Like I have a lot of respect for that, for for that um mentality and approach on the constant. It's freaking wild. My my favorite oh, wow. thing my favorite thing he said though was uh, when he was talking about the um, uh, what the thing that his kid have to do what do they, what do they call that the uh, the barbarian well yeah but but he said that Dude. it was like it was a thing that you write have a to passage do. write a passage it was write a passage Ooh. I love the fact that and, it, and I, what he's saying is nothing new like you you got you have to be able to work through shit and that's what makes you tough. You are not born tough. You do not get tough by having everything handed to you. You do not get tough by, by convenience and whatever. So like, you know, he was going the, you know, pushing the other way where it's like, you know, if you're living barbarian, you, you don't do all of these convenience things. True. But I think that you can still go, okay, here's my convenience things. Um, you know, whether it's, uh, the cell phone or the whatever, you know, the, the, the good car, the better gas, the food, whatever, but you can still make yourself go to the gym and test it, make it difficult. Don't make it easy, make it difficult. And even, even for kids stuff, like they need to know that, like, you need to push through this, whether it's, you got to study or you gotta, you gotta train or you have to play your sport. That's why, man, I love sports and I love sports that have winners and losers because, that is life. And you have to be able to lose and pick yourself back up and figure out how to win. Cause that's, I mean, you talk about living barbarian. That's it right there. You got to be able to win. And that's, I mean, wrestlers, you go out, one person wins and one person loses jujitsu, like all this, like soccer mm-hmm. stuff where you don't take score and there's no <laughs> points and all of that. Cra- like, Oh God, I hate that. I, <laughs> I legit don't trust anyone if they've never played a team sport or 
any type of individual sport. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, um, on that note, I do have to go. But Jeremy, um, we are. Um, uh, Bill Grundler has a uh, museum of dick pics. So if you want to donate to the show, donate <laughs> dick pics to Bill Grundler at gmail.com. And um, we will the see obelisk. you guys soon. 